I think our first point of contact in the spirit of finding those overlapping circles of interest between you two will be the similarities, if there are any, between the concept of a meme and the concept of an archetype. So, Professor Dawkins, perhaps you can begin by telling us, what is a meme? A meme is a virus of the mind. So it's something that spreads because it spreads because it spreads. It's something that spreads by imitation. As I understand it, an archetype is quite different from that because an archetype is something which all humans have um, as a virtue of being human, something that, that's built in. So it's not something that spreads as an epidemic. It's something that we all have anyway. And I suppose that it could turn into a meme, but I, I would think it would be muddying the waters to even say that there's something very much in common between an archetype and a meme. Memes are not embedded into the psychology of people as No, they arise. They're, 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 they're things like the backwards baseball hat, mm. which is not an archetype. I mean, it's, it's something that, that becomes fashionable and spreads as an epidemic around the population, which is very different from an archetype, which is sort of built in. Yes, I've heard you in the past, Dr. Peterson, say that a meme is very similar, if not almost identical to an archetype, almost as if you kept pushing the idea of what a meme is, you might end up with an archetype, but well, perhaps I, not. Well, I think maybe the, the appropriate way of tying the two I ideas together, given what Dr. Dawkins just said, is, the, is to notice the fact that something spreads because it catches, right? And so things catch because they have an emotional resonance, and so they attract people's interest, and so they attract them in an exploratory manner, that'd be one way of thinking about it. That would be attraction on the positive emotion side, or they attract them on the negative emotion side. And so that would loop the idea of the catchiness of a idea, a meme, let's say, with the more underlying motivational structures. And as the idea is more related to the action of underlying biological motivational structures, it it becomes more and more expression of something that's instinctual and archetypal. Like Jung defined it, archetype essentially is something like the the manifestation of an instinct in image and then also in behavior. So the deepest level is something like the instinct, and that would be motivational or emotional drive. And then there's a manifestation of that in imagination and behavior, and it's more culturally constructed there. Then you could also imagine that there are depths of these ideas. The, the, the baseball hat idea, for example, that would be something that's manifesting itself at a fairly shallow level. But there's a reason that the backwards baseball hat caught on. You know, it speaks of the moment for whatever reason. And, and it's linked to the biology through the fact that it captures interest for some reason. So perhaps something like uh, the archetype being a more fundamental psychological concept that memes can then play upon. The backwards cat yes, catches the, on. Well, that seems implausible to me, but the, but the idea that the archetype could be a reason why some memes spread, that, that seems to me to be plausible if you believe okay. in archetypes at all. Yes. But you prefer to think of memes, or you do think of memes as, you, you refer to them as a virus. Yes, it's, it doesn't have it's, to have a negative it's the, it's the spreadability which is, which is the salient po point, and if chiming in with an archetype is, something, is some, a reason why they might spread, then I could go with that. Yeah, and presumably archetypes don't act in the same way. They don't spread through cultures. They don't sort of grow up and die in individual generations. Well, They're much well, more foundational than that. I think you have to think about it hierarchically. You know, that there are, there's something in, in, the, in the structure that that would make itself manifest as an archetype. There's something that's foundational and deep that wouldn't change over, wouldn't change any faster in a sense than the species itself changes. But then there would be efflorescences of that idea that would be less permanent as they as they were more attuned to the specifics of the time. So, and that's not saying anything different really than saying that there are ideas that make themselves manifest at different levels of depth, which is also a complex thing. Like it's not, a, it's not that easy to specify what makes an idea deep, which makes it more archetypal, and what makes it transient and trivial. There's a relationship between such ideas. There's no idea so trivial that it doesn't touch the depths because no one would care about it, right? So, but, but, but archetypal ideas do have that capacity to spread virally and to rise and fall, you see that, I think you see that in the history of religious ideas. You know, that religious ideas are very 
can be very catching because otherwise they wouldn't spread. Now, they do, there's variation in them like there is in languages, but they also, there's also something that's core that makes them identifiable, let's say, as religious ideas rather than as any other sort of idea. I mean, one of the things I was really interested about, I sent you an email at one time asking you if you had read Richie Eliad, especially The Sacred and the Profane, but he also has a three book series called A History of Religious Ideas. And I really like A History of Religious Ideas. It's a great book. And one of the things it does is analyze a particular widespread religious motif, which is the battle between the gods in heaven. You see this idea in many, many cultures. And each god is the expression of a mode of perception or a mode of being. And what you see happening in a multitude of cultures is that there are many, many ways of seeing the world and acting in it that are metamorphos metamorphized into something divine. And as cultures mingle and mix, their, their gods compete in the space of the imagination and something like a hierarchy forms. That's the emergence of something like monotheism. And the associate... Oh, so we've been talking a little bit about the concept of a meme. I think it's, it would be strange to be suspicious of the idea that memes are a thing that do exist and transmit, but there might be more room for suspicion about this concept of the archetype. I was wondering, Professor Dawkins, what you think about the concept of archetypes in general. Well, for example, if we take the idea of the, of the gods competing with each other, um, that I take it is a, is a, is a proper archetype because it's, it's, it's present in all, in all cultures. I presume you mean something that's built in Genetically, ultimately, I suppose, that, 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 that something about our brains makes different cultures invent the same kinds of religious uh, symbols. Yes. And things like a battle between gods is one. That's one. It, it, and um, there might be others. It's not that convincing. I mean, it's such an obvious thing because we have human battles and therefore an idea of battles between gods would not be that implausible. So it, it doesn't strike me as a very penetrating observation.